welcome to another episode of What Are You Reading? What Are You Writing? I'm your host, Karen E. Osborne, author of Getting It Right, Tangled Lies, Reckonings, and the upcoming True Grace, which comes out in September. And I am so glad, thank you, thank you. And I am so glad that you are back with us or if this is your first time, because Anessa invited you and said, you better watch this. (laughs) Welcome, welcome. (laughs) (laughs) So my guest today is Anessa Sewell Kent. And she is a debut author. And her new book, her first book and her new book, the first of many, no doubt, is Bitter, the Bitter and the Sweet. Welcome, welcome, Anessa. Oh, Karen, I'm tickled. And I am so glad you're here too. Thank you. I was looking, you know, searching around about you, finding out information about you. And you describe yourself as a small town Alabama girl. Yes. What else would you like to share about your audience, about you, with our audience, about you? Okay. Well, I graduated from Auburn University with a Bachelor of Arts in English Literature Um, with double minors in Spanish and political science. Uh, I've never used any of my degrees. (laughs) I take that back. I've used some of my Spanish. Um, I was raised in Opelika, Alabama, which is in the eastern part of the state, twin twin cities with Auburn. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm a veteran of the United States Navy. Wow. Yes. What did you do in the Navy? I was an operations specialist. So the dark rooms with the radars and the weapon buttons and the weapon systems, uh, that's the room I was in, in a very technical field with a artistic mind. So that was, Different. that was quite funny, <laughs> but, but I did it. I did it. Um, gosh, let's see. I, I was, I was a homemaker. From uh, 2005 until 2020, what year are we, 23, 21? Um, I have been a real estate agent. My longest career run has been as a real estate agent. I grew up with a real estate agent as a mother, as my mother. And I followed along in her path in my early 30s. That's my longest sales I'm a salesperson. I've sold since I was a little girl. Girl well, that's going to help you, right? It, it is, yes, Karen, because now I'm, I'm selling my biggest product, which is myself. And so I do have the training for that. Um, cool. That is wonderful. That is yeah. awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So tell our audience about the premise of your book first, and then I'd love to hear a little bit more about your protagonist. Okay. Um, this, this book, The Bitter and the Sweet, all spurned from one telephone conversation that I had with a fellow real estate agent about a piece of property in, uh, south of, south of Dothan, Alabama, where I live. And I could not believe what she told me that the property had been prior in its prior life in conservative Alabama with, which was a barbecue restaurant slash strip club. (laughs) And I, I couldn't pick myself up off the floor. I thought, you have got to be kidding. I mean, here? And she's like, yeah, but it's abandoned and it's been abandoned for years. But anyway, out of that, which is not even mentioned in, until book two, which I'm currently into book two, the sequel to book one. He, that didn't even show up. But my book one is about a character, um, a, a, a female, strong female, that was asked to join an all boys high school basketball team uh, in 1943. And Mm. the town goes nuts. It's riots. The whole thing is torn up. Everybody's blown up. Everybody's so angry. Well, she ends up taking that team as their center for the team to the state championships in 43 and 44. Wow. And they win. Of course they do. Of course they do. Uh, she she proves, you know, that she can do it. And finally the guys come on board and now they're a team and it just works. And she's this odd little um, 
girl um, that just makes her mind up to do something. And so she, she, she did it. She went against conventions. She went against the advice of her parents. So she said, I can do it. So she does it. Well, life situations take her from her little town of Spitz Creek, Alabama, to Mobile, Alabama, where she ends up moving in and living with her aged aunt. And it is the story of Bernadine from 17 to 34, mm. growing and changing and morphing and recreating and redeeming, uh, persevering, grit, um, hard work, not taking no, going against the social norms for women in the 1940s um, and, and just coming out beautiful. You've got this gangly girl in high school who's not beautiful, who turns into this beautiful butterfly. It's, she's just a kind of a butterfly story, cocoon to just monarch butterfly. Wow. Do you have and, a cover? Do you have a picture of the cover? And, yeah, on my phone, girl, because I don't even have my cover yet. I don't even have my book yet. That's how, that's how new we are here. Can you see that? Mm, it's kind of washed out. Yeah. It's too oh, bright. Well, when it's ready, whenever the book uh, cover is ready, if you send it to me, I will show it to our audience. I will okay. post it and I'll say, this is the book and this is the day that you can hear her, her uh, interview. So yes. you just, you get me that JPEG when it's, when it's ready. What do you like the most about, what, what's her name? What's your protagonist's name? Her, her name is Verna Dean. Verna Dean. Verna Dean Dawn Turnipseed. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I know it. I know. And she lives in Spitz Creek, Alabama, which comes from, you know, Schitt's Creek. And I thought, well, how can we make a turn on that to something that's <laughs> acceptable? Um, you know, because I've got a lot of prayer in this book. I've got a lot of Jesus faith filled people in this book. But my sense of humor comes through the things like that, the small little things of Spitz Creek and Bernadine and the, how the preacher's wife acts and there's some funny funny scenes and there's also some that just had me just melting on the floor I have laughed so hard and cried so hard through through this therapy this was a therapy thing for me Karen yeah you know um, most books I find so I'm on my fourth book yeah and I find that we get so involved with our our protagonists, our, our heroines, yes. that that we do, we cry through it, we laugh through it. They they live with us. They're they're real people. They and, are, and it's 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 a wonderful thing. And lots of first books are therapy. My first book certainly was, you know. And then we go on and yeah, keep yeah. going I, with the second one. Yes. So, so tell me, so you are, when this comes out, um, you'll be like a week from your book launch. Yes. So um, what are your plans? How are you, what do you, what do you have that's exciting that you're going to do to launch this book? Yeah, I've already got three signings um, scheduled um, so far. One at my local hometown independent bookstore, uh, Downtown Books. Um, a week after launch, um, and then I've got my hometown, um, this, do you know about Chicken Salad Chick? Have you ever heard of that restaurant? Okay, well, anyway, she's a marketing guru. Anyway, she and her husband have this beautiful place in my hometown of Opelika, which is a restaurant market, um, lawn, center, lawn uh, garden center. Anyway, it's beautiful. So we're doing a launch there for my hometown with a band and she's even doing some things on the menu for bitter and sweet. And I've got a signature cocktail that she's featuring at the bar and uh, that'll be my hometown people. And then another library uh, in Auburn in June. And I'm, I'm just scheduling. That's awesome. I'm, I'm scheduling stuff. I, I bought a 1973 vintage Scotty camper. Her name is Honeydew, and she is my traveling companion for my for my travels. 
This is so good. You know, I could just see stories being written about you <laughs> as you and Honey do make your way. This is awesome. What's so yes. creative too and fun. Yes. <laughs> so one of the things that uh, that I have struggles with, so I always ask other historical fiction writers about it because um, I've written, just finished my first historical fiction book and I just struggle with research. I, you know, I know there are people who love research. They get so excited and I just like making stuff up. Yeah. So I just wondered about your approach. Do you, did you do a lot of research beforehand? Did you do it while you were writing it? How did you deal with the research? You know, because I never know what I'm going to write and where it's going to take me because I'm character driven. Um, I have to do the research as I go. And, and that's what I did for this one, because the, the, the year spans on this book is 1926 to 1961. So before I was born, but I know enough Southernism to figure some of it out, but Google, Google was my friend, Google was my friend. And then looking up um, old websites for Mobile on restaurants and what department stores were in downtown Mobile in 1943 and um, sending these emails to strangers um, mm. about Alabama sports history in the 1940s. And they responded. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm talking to strangers and, and just throwing these questions out and getting a response. And I mean, when I got back, you know, that one from the stranger, I just, I cried over that. That's said, wonderful. It was, it was so sweet. Yes, um, yes, yes. So, so and then what, personal. A good, what a good approach. I too did my research as I went, because I didn't know where my story was going. So I, I researched like, oh my goodness, I wonder what that looked like in 1924. Exactly. Google was my friend as well. But mm -hmm. I, I was talking to another, speaking with another um fellow historical fiction writer and she did three years of research before she put her first I know so everybody's different yes. everybody's different right? I don't have the attention span for that oh see that makes me shake I mean <laughs> that's like I'm that's like doing math <laughs> <Yes. laughs> I mean so wow. when you're um but we admire all styles. We do. All styles. Yes, we do. Because um, it, it takes yeah. all of the flavors in the ice cream bucket to make exactly. it. Yes, that's exactly. right. So you mentioned that you're already working on the sequel. Yes. Uh, to the book. So how far are you along? Kind of how that how's that going? Oh, well, I'm, I'm roughly halfway through. Um, so it's it is the pickup of um, three or four of characters from. Uh, book one from the bitter and the sweet book two I have entitled um, remember the good things mm -hmm. and it is um, a continuation of some of the four of the four or five of the people from book one and there's some new people in book two that I had no idea there's a whole family that just showed up in book two <laughs> with this tragic story and 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 death and drinking kerosene and and killing themselves by accident i mean which is wow. you know yeah um that just showed up yeah isn't that amazing how that happens yes it was funny i i was just i just sent off um uh, my fourth novel i just sent it to my publisher that's exciting and, which was it was a wonderful feeling and i and my husband and i are going on a little vacation and i thought oh so i'm just and then these characters just started talking to me. And the next book was already like, you know, and he said to me, Karen, Karen, though, like, couldn't you leave your computer home just for a week? No, no, but I promise we'll have a really good time together. Yes. But, yes. but they, I will spend time today. with you <laughs> after I get this out. Yes. yes. Now, you know, we're both Black Rose writing. Yes. Authors. Yes. We both okay. have the same yes. publisher. Yes. 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 So um, this program is called, what are you reading? What are you writing? So we need to talk about reading. And okay. what genres do you like to read? Oh, okay. Uh, Southern women's fiction. Um, it gravitates, I gravitate so hard to that one. Um, legal thrillers. 
suspense, mm. true crime, biographies and autobiographies, history. Mm. Um, I'm an I'm an old kind of an old soul, and so I like things that I, I like to revisit the past on a lot of things and just kind of relish in how great it was then. And oh, I wish we were, you know still there but we're not but but I could read about it yes and, yeah. and dream and about it isn't that the best thing about books yeah they take us places that we can't go to or haven't been to and um I heard uh someone describe it as you know we build these walls around ourselves uh you know we get used to being in whatever our little world is but books let us climb up and look over the wall and see what else is going on out in the world. So books are a wonderful gift. So do you have some recommendations for our, our viewers? Well, I pulled, there's one, two, three, four, five books sitting right here beside me. Okay, you have to pick two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm currently in the middle of the, the latest John Grisham novel, The Boys from Biloxi. Mm. I've read every one of his. I love I love John Grisham. This one is a little um, a little harder to get through. Most of his are a lot more fast paced than the boys from mm -hmm. Biloxi, but it's still the history of the, you know, the, the Dixie Mafia and the, and the building of the city of Biloxi mm -hmm. and the crime and the strip clubs and the prostitutes and the murder and, wow. you know, how he just gets all tangled. Yeah. What's so the tiny. year? What 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 era is it? These are it's the sixties. The sixties. Okay. Mm hmm. Um, another one um, I, that I loved because I'm a huge Agatha Christie yeah. fan, and so I read the Christie Affair by Nina de Gramont. Mm hmm. And it it is a fictionalized truth mixed together of the, the two or three weeks or a month that she disappeared in real life. Mm. And so Nina took the, the true story of Agatha's disappearance and mixed in some fictional characters with some true characters. It was fascinating. Wow, that's cool. It was very, it was very fun to read, The Christie Affair. Wow, so I'm gonna let you throw in one more since you had five. Pick okay, um, The Lost Girls of Willowbrook by mm -hmm. Ellen Marie Wiseman mm -hmm. is a story about girls that were dropped off at this sanatorium, which is what they were called at the time, mm -hmm. and just forgotten. Mm -hmm. Girls that maybe had teenage pregnancies or um, suffered from depression or whatever, and the families just didn't want to deal with them, so they just took them to this hospital. Mm -hmm. And it's the stories of these girls um, what happens to them? Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Those are three very different stories. Yes. So I appreciate that. That sounds really good. Yeah, I'm kind but, of all over the board. But that is that is part of your charm. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> As we, so if people out there want to know more about you, they want to follow you, they want to purchase your book, you want to purchase a book, don't you? Yes. How do they find you? Well, right now I've got pre-sale going on, but at the time when this comes out, we'll be able just to go to Amazon um, and, and buy the book. Um, I am on the newsletter for BookBub, new release for less, a week after my uh, story, my novel hits for the ebook. Cool. Um, yeah, so I'm just trying to... And do you have a website? Are you I, on social I media? I don't have a website yet. I've got my email address and I have my Facebook. Okay, Facebook. Um, How can I find you on Facebook? My Facebook is Anessa Sewell Kent Author. That's Excellent. my Facebook. Anessa yeah. Sewell Kent, comma, author. Yes, I visited your, your Facebook page. And, and uh, I haven't I'm done a whole lot you. with it yet. No, I've noticed that. But I'm following you. I'm following you. So I'm looking forward to more good stuff. 
uh, coming on there because you have so many stories and you're so funny and <laughs> engaging. So I think oh, that's awesome. Thank I you. I hope you guys have enjoyed Anessa as much as I have. This has been such a fun conversation and I hope that you will follow her because and watch her Facebook page grow and get better and then she'll tell you when her website is up and so really follow her. And I hope that you are already following me on Instagram, Facebook, my YouTube channel, um, and where else am I? LinkedIn, Twitter. So I hope you will find me somewhere that you're comfortable and that you will join us again next week for What Are You Reading? What Are You Writing? Have a great week, everybody. Bye.